Well, I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. The question came in from Vicki Hutchings. Love your content, relevant information in an entertaining way. Do you know how to create a seamless repeating pattern with a half drop? The half drop repeat is quite daunting. I didn't even know what a half drop was, but I looked it up, did some research, and it is very easy to do in Inkscape, and I actually like the method. It can also be applied to the original seamless pattern. This is an example from a previous tutorial where it's a full drop. Here is the initial square and it repeats horizontally and vertically the same. I guess the disadvantage is you can kind of tell the repeat. Here's pink flower, pink flower, pink flower versus with a half drop. If this is the initial pattern, it does repeat vertically, but it goes down a half step on the horizontal. If you've never heard of it, like I'd never heard of it, I'm sure I've seen it all the time in wrapping paper or bed sheets or shirts or clothings. This is a different color pattern I made for the thumbnail. But let's go over the simple way in Inkscape how to do it almost automatically. This method will work very well if you don't have anything bleeding over the edge. So I have this group selected. Go to Path, Path Effects. Let's make this wider. The Path Effects menu will be blank, so look for this plus. Hit the plus, and now you'll see all the different live path effects. You want to find one that says Tiling. You can type it up here. Usually it's down on the bottom, tiling right here. And I'll explain what we're looking at here. So tiling is the path effect. These are all different modes. Stay on the first one for today. It's gonna to take your initial selection and do two rows and two columns. So this would be a regular standard repeat where the initial square repeats horizontally and vertically to make the pattern. It turns out that by using the offset percentage, we'll do 50% and we'll offset the tiles vertically with this button. There's our half drop repeat. Now I'll add more rows and columns, three by three. And you can see, here's the initial. Let's put this to the top. If this is the original, it's gonna repeat itself vertically and it's gonna drop a half step down when it repeats horizontally. And I guess the concept is this half drop repeat will spread out the pattern in a less obvious way so you don't just see the, the same obvious pattern, white circle, white circle, white circle. This will work very well, very quickly if you're creating a square pattern and you're keeping things all inside this unit. All right, let's move on to the more exciting stuff. Let's do a custom half drop repeat. The method we're gonna use for half drop actually works pretty well for the regular standard repeat also, and it might even be a little bit faster. We'll start by defining our page. Right here is the default. Go to File, Document Properties. This is actually the A4 template. For this exercise, let's change the units of measurement. Hit the delta, change it for millimeters, go to pixels. And for width, change it to a thousand pixels, enter. You can see the preview, the change happens. For height, same thing, 1,000 pixels, enter. And that's it, that's the whole setup. I want the base color for my pattern to be this purple, or violet, whatever it is. I can hold Shift and Control to resize it, or if I'm actually on the selector tool, I can look up here in the control bar, and for height and width, same thing, let's change it to pixels. I'll just punch in 1,000 by 1,000 and an easy way to get it to line up perfectly, go to Object, Align and Distribute. This menu is kind of busy, but basically go down to Relative to Page. This object is selected. I'm gonna center it vertically and center it horizontally. X out of that, and we can start creating. I brought in these floral elements from the public domain from some 19th century floral patterns I found. I'll take this large leaf, and all you have to remember is, on a half drop, if you're gonna bleed over the bottom or top edge, whatever bleeds over has to show up on the corresponding side. And an easy way to do that is with Transform. Go to Object, down here at the bottom, transform. We're gonna use the move tab, and there's only two choices, horizontal or vertical. Just make sure you have the relative move selected. And for today, we wanna be always in pixels. Pixels right there. Now because our base square is a thousand pixels, all I need to do is move this up a thousand pixels. Now if I type in a thousand, it's gonna move this actual object. So I need to do Control D, which duplicates it. So there's now two. With the top one selected, I'll type in 1000 pixels. That's my transform move. But look at this arrow, it's pointing down. So if I hit apply, it's gonna knock this down a thousand pixels down. So instead, we'll do negative 1000, apply. 
There it is. I'll grab this part here, whatever this is, it's flower. And if it doesn't go over an edge, just leave it. The difference happens when you bring in something off a horizontal edge. Let's take this one and put it over here. I'll do control D, which duplicates it, and we'll move the top one. Now intuitively, you might be thinking, all right, great, it's gonna go over negative 1000 to the left horizontally, and that's true, but we also have to drop it down 500. So it's gonna end up down here. That's what makes it repeat on the half drop. First, I'll punch in negative 1000 pixels for the horizontal, and because it's a half drop, this should be positive 500, drops it down, apply. There it is. That's pretty much it. I'll finish up the pattern by putting an object here to fill some space. This one only goes over a vertical. Don't worry about a horizontal shift. And the vertical, if it points down, I have to go up. So it becomes negative 1000. Did I duplicate that? I don't think so. Control D, apply. Let's throw this in here just underneath. <laughs> I cheated. This doesn't go over any edges, so we're done. Over here on the hierarchy, I'll drop that to the bottom, then up one step just to have some texture in the background. What's this? Throw that in there. All right, so let's show you how you can now group all this together and stamp out the one square. My clipping object, I'll just use Control D, this base, turn that different color, cut the opacity, and all this will be grouped. I'm just grabbing a bounding box over everything, holding Shift to get the rest of the stuff so we don't forget anything, Control G. Group. It's all grouped. I do want to line it up perfectly, and this is why I, I always set it up on top of the page. Go back to the Align and Distribute menu. I've got the clipping box selected page relative to page. It's centered up vertically, horizontally. Hold Shift, grab the whole group, Object, Clip, Set Clip. <laughs> that is it. Okay, let's prove it, make sure it's working. Let's see if it repeats vertically. Control D to duplicate it. You can move these exactly with the transform. Let's just eyeball it. I've got my snapping enabled. Let's see if I can do the repeat vertically. There it is. The vertical repeat works. Now, does it work on the half step? Control D. This would be the regular repeat, and it's broken. See how it doesn't line up at all? But if you go down a half step, it works. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky, for the question. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If you have any other questions, want to see some different things in Inkscape, let me know in the comments. Did you know what a half drop was? I did not. So that's it for today. See you next time.